Hello my friends, welcome to this blue episode about Docker and getting started with Docker. Before I started doing Docker, it took me actually a quite long time and the reason was it all seemed so theoretical and difficult to understand to me and I thought in order to give you a head start we take a different approach and we just go ahead and install it and we will be pulling our first Docker container today which will actually be a software called Portainer that gives you a great graphical user interface to Docker. So it will be a Docker container controlling Docker. Have a look. So first let's install Docker on Linux. In order to do so, I need to run as root apt get install Docker. Or obviously the better way to do it is if you're not root, just as you do apt get install Docker. And it will go off and pull the required packages from your installation source. So I'm running this on Ubuntu, by the way. If you would be running this on Debian, it would be pretty much the same thing. On other systems, you might need to use RPM or another software distribution tool. So in order to start Docker, start the service, I'm using systemctl. So the command is as you do systemctl start docker.service. On other systems, you might need to do slash etc slash init.d slash docker blank start. Let me just see if it's running. So I'm just launching PS and looking for the word docker in it. Here it is, it's running. The process is docker d. If I just do pid of docker d, I get the pid. Let's go ahead and install it on Windows. The approach is a bit different. We need to pull the installation sources from the web. If you just Google for docker desktop for Windows, that would redirect you to the Docker Hub where you can actually just click on the get Docker icon and download the installation files. So let's just save that file. And once it's downloaded, let me just speed this up a little bit. Once it's downloaded, just open the installer and launch it. The installer will ask you if it's okay to make changes to your system. Here we go. We just say yes, that's fine. Please go ahead and install. And um, now this installer needs some time because it's installing a lot of Linux components and Linux packages. Now one might think that the installation was very, very quick on Linux and it's so slow on Windows. Now that's only half the truth because I had Docker already installed on my Linux machine before. This was the reason it was much, much faster. So it can take a reasonable amount of time on Linux as well. However, probably on a Windows system, you don't have all those components installed. So it can take a couple of minutes until it gets installed. So here we are, we get the Docker desktop icon. And of course, uh, in good Windows style, <laughs> we need to reboot. Let's do that. Here we are back in business. We have rebooted the Windows system and uh, Docker desktop is up and running. So let me just launch a command shell and um, just type Docker just to see if the software comes up. Yes, it does. And you can see it shows a, a help um, context giving us um, various commands. So the first command we want to issue is actually Docker pull. So we want to pull a Docker image from the Docker registry and the image name is portainer slash portainer. So what we do is docker blank pull blank portainer slash portainer. It goes off to the internet, to the Docker registry and pulls the portainer image. So in order to run the, the image, we need to issue that command. It looks a bit complicated. Basically what we're doing is we're running it as a daemon, we're running it on port 9000, and um, we need to give it a couple of parameters, such as the name of the image, and also it needs to be able to connect to the Docker socket, because we want to control Docker with that Docker container. Don't worry too much about this, just type the command exactly as shown. Now on Windows, there is a bit of uh, additional GUI uh, in available, such as uh, the dashboard. So let me just uh, click on that Docker icon I have. 
in my taskbar and bring up the dashboard. The dashboard will show me information about the containers that are running. Obviously we don't have any because we have just installed it. And uh, same thing like on the Linux. Let's just go into a command line and let's just type this command. I, I put the commands into the comments. Now, the firewall comes up because um, as you can see in the dashboard, we started the container and obviously we are exposing TCP ports 8000 and 9000. Those are the ports we will be connecting to with a web browser. Now you need to be aware of that if you're running port and you're exposing these ports. So it would be a good idea to stop Docker before you go to the internet cafe. Now let's just launch Portainer. So we do so by opening a web browser and browsing to the address localhost colon 9000. So we are connecting to this port 9000, which we have opened. The first thing Portainer asks is, we need to create an admin user. And now we want to go to our local environment because this is where we have all the containers running. And um, we get the latest news from Portainer, so let's just dismiss that. And if we click on the local environment, we can see I have three containers running in this environment. There's eight volumes, four images. Let me just click on the containers so that we can see which containers we have. Now you see this Portainer, Portainer image, and um, the name of this container is Frosty Turing. That is because I didn't specify a name and Docker gave it automatically gave it a name. Now I can use Portainer and change the name of that container. So let me go back to the container view and as you can see, I now have this nice container called Portainer, which is much, much easier to work with because uh, it's a, a talking name. Now let me just stop this container by issuing the command docker stop portainer and uh, actually do the run command again. Now I'm curious to see what happens here because this is one of the caveats. Now if I reconnect to portainer it's asking me to create an admin account again and that is mainly because I have created a new container by issuing the run command. Let me just connect to the environment and let me just see what containers are actually running. You can see I have five containers and the one I'm running has again been assigned a new name. And there is also another which I try to spawn up being non-root user. And my nice portainer container here is stopped. Now, how did this happen? What I did is I pulled the image and I started it. Then it created a container. I stopped the container and started the image again. Now, when you start an image, it actually creates a new container. So in order to get rid of this, what I can do is, I need to do this as, as you do. I just stop the not so nice container. Then I start the one I want, which is Portainer. And let me go back to the Portainer GUI and see what happened. So logging in now, Portainer remembers the admin account I created in the first session. Just go back to the local environment here. And just look at the containers we have. So here are the, the two containers which I don't want to have anymore. And I can now use Portainer to actually remove them just by clicking on the red remove button. I also want to remove all non-persistent volumes. Don't worry too much about non-persistent and persistent volumes. I will explain all these in, in, in future episodes. The main thing to note is that um, an image can be looked at, if I just go to images, an image can actually be looked at as being the installation CD for the software, whereas the container is the installed version of the software, right? So what I did, I installed it twice, basically. That's how you could think about it. Now let me just go to the volumes. And uh, the nice thing is that Portainer shows me all these volumes that have been created by my double, triple, run action and I can just get rid of them for the time being. I have no important data on the system. You can't break anything. It, it, don't worry. If you need, you can just delete the container and spawn it up again. There's a couple of other possibilities to do with a portainer, such as uh, execute a console on the machine, such as inspect the, um, the container, such as uh, bringing up the logs. 
all these Docker containers generate a lot of log files. And here is a view of the inspect command. You could also issue that on the command line doing Docker inspect. Now that we have a nice GUI, we're obviously using this. And um, if we look into the mounts, so that means the drives or, or the subdirectories, the Docker image sees. For the time being, there is just the Docker socket and a non-persistent volume. Thank you very much for watching. I, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, let me know in the comments. If you didn't, if you do disagree with anything I said, please do so as well. Let me know in the comments. In the next episodes, we will be building more Docker containers, for example, a video surveillance system. We will be building a satellite receiver system. Furthermore, we will run a whole home automation system in a Docker container. And all of this can run on one single small PC in various containers. Stay tuned for that. Don't miss out on episodes. Please do subscribe to my channel. Helps me produce more of these videos for you. Hope you liked it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.